Senator Roberts. Thank you. Carbon dioxide credits are a scam, an absolute fraud. And the Greens agree on this with One Nation. Yes, you heard that correctly. Difficult to believe. So Australians may wonder, what do we agree on? Granted, the Greens and One Nation come to the same conclusions for very different reasons. Nonetheless, we share the conclusion that carbon dioxide credits are a scam, rife with opportunities for fraud. The Clean Energy Regulator has issued 140 million carbon dioxide credits. At the current spot price of, 50, of $35 each, this represents a racket, a racket potentially worth $4.9 billion. That's expected to grow by 20 million credits or $700 million this year alone, to make it uh, 5.6. And the Greens and One Nation aren't the only ones to criticise Australian carbon dioxide credit units, or ACCUs, ACUs. In 2022, the environmental law expert at the Australian National University, Professor Andrew McIntosh, and his colleagues published a series of papers absolutely tearing apart the ACU carbon dioxide credit system. Now keep in mind, this is a $5.5 billion market that's being fabricated fabricated, in part to give the UN income, ultimately. As usual, they enlist parasites who benefit while pushing UN policy for them. For example, the major banks, Rothschilds Australia, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, had on their advisory boards in this country at the time the CSIRA chief executive, Dr. Megan Clark, on their advisory boards. Conflict of interest? Hmm. Back to the study of ACU carbon dioxide credits. They said, quote, the, the, the um, study under Professor Andrew McIntosh, they said, quote, the available data suggests 70 to 80 percent of carbon credits issued to projects are devoid of integrity. 70 to 80 percent, 20 to 30, may have some integrity. Remember, this is a five point, that's the end of the quote. Remember, this is a $5.5 billion market. Here's another quote. What is occurring is a fraud on the environment. A fraud on the environment, I say to the Greens. And what Dr. McAllister said, Dr. McIntosh, sorry. What is occurring is a fraud on the environment, a fraud on taxpayers, Australian taxpayers, and a fraud on unwitting private buyers of ACUs. End of quote. In response to these revelations, the government commissioned what they call the Chubb Review. The government should have been, just been honest and called it what it really was, a whitewash, a distortion, misinformation. Actually, it's disinformation, the Chubb Review. In the past, when Chubb, Dr. Chubb, Professor Chubb has been requested for empirical scientific data within a logical scientific point, backing up claims of climate change due to human carbon dioxide, he failed to produce it repeatedly. He has never produced it, yet he's often advocated for it. He's part of the climate fraud industry and has received a lot of money to push climate fraud, being heavily rewarded by both Liberal Nationals and Labor Party governments. The Chubb Review, in this case, addressed nothing of substance, provided no evidence for its claims, problems that, claims that problems had been fixed, yet the government held the report up as proof, everything's fine, everything's fine. As Professor McIntosh and his colleagues outlined in a response to the Chubb Review, the Chubb Review spent less than six pages discussing the ACU rules. 5.5 billion. They say, quote, the Chubb Report does not contain references to the evidence relied upon to reach its conclusion. I'll say that again. The Chubb Report does not contain references to the evidence relied upon to reach its conclusions and includes very little analysis to support its findings. Importantly, the panel does not address key questions around the integrity of the scheme's rules. What use was that? Fraud on the environment, a fraud on taxpayers, and a fraud on unwitting buyers of ACUs. Another quote. Bewilderingly, I don't find it bewildering. It's straightforward. I've been watching this scam unfold for years. Bewilderingly, in its assessment of the methods, the panel does not refer to the findings of a review it commissioned from the Australian Academy of Science that, quote, 
found numerous flaws in the methods and the associated governance process. Numerous flaws in the methods and the associated governance process. So typical of this government. So typical of Liberal, Nationals and Labor pushing the climate fraud. Another quote. The Chubb Review acknowledged the scientific evidence criticising the carbon dioxide credit scheme, but says it was also provided with evidence to the contrary, yet it did not disclose what that evidence was or what it relates to. But the public is simply expected to trust that the evidence exists. Maybe the dog ate its breakfast, uh, ate uh, the report, the evidence for breakfast. The end of quote. This is what the government says is assurance and integrity for taxpayer money. While the Greens, Professor McIntosh, and I may agree on the integrity issues with carbon dioxide credits, here's where I leave them behind. There is no reason to reduce our output of carbon dioxide or trade credits for it. Carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide credits can never have integrity because they are a scam designed to transfer wealth from the pockets of Australians, everyday Australians and their families and small businesses, to the bank accounts of billionaire net zero scam artists and parasitic multinationals sucking on the financial payout from climate fraud and associated financial scams. Note some of these points, and I won't go into them in, in, in detail. The government that introduced the renewable energy target, scam, the national electricity market, that is really a national electricity racket, it's not a market, it's a bureaucrat bureaucrat bureaucratic controlled entity, stole farmers' property rights across the country so that they could comply with the UN's Kyoto Protocol put in place the first policy, not legislation, but the first policy advocating for a carbon dioxide tax. It wasn't Julia Gillard. It was the Howard government that did all these things. The Howard government laid the foundation for all of this and went around our constitution to steal farmers' property rights around the country. And then, six years after being booted from office, after the Liberal Nationals told us in the Howard government that it's all based on science, John Howard said, in London, at a major lecture from a sceptic think tank, said that on the topic of climate science, he was agnostic. He didn't have the science. He didn't have the science. And now our electricity sector is being crippled because of the renewable energy target, the national electricity market, and an alphabet soup of uh, bureaucratic agencies. There has never been, there never is, any empirical scientific data and logical scientific points that human carbon dioxide is warming the planet. Not from CSIRO, I've done freedom of information requests, held them accountable in the Senate. Not from their publications, never. Not from the Bureau of Meteorology, same deal. Not from the United Nations, same deal. There's also no policy basis. There is no documented effect per unit of human carbon dioxide on climate factors such as air temperature, rainfall, heat waves, drought, severity, frequency, storm, severity, frequency, duration. None at all. There is no basis for this policy on which the carbon dioxide credits are based. There's been no cost-benefit analysis. There's been no business case. Ross Garno, who uh, pro produced a report for the Rudd-Gillard government, in his report on the science, said there basically is no science. He's going on the consensus. Yet he's parasitically sucking on so solar and wind subsidies, driving up electricity prices and putting Australians into poverty. And remember, the extra money that goes to electricity, the extra costs of electricity in this country is a highly regressive tax on the poor in our country. In, 20, in 2009 and 2020, we had a global experiment two, twice showing that carbon dioxide has no effect on human carbon dioxide has no effect on carbon dioxide levels in the air. We had a major uh, downturn with the, with the global financial crisis in 2008. We had a, then a recession in 2009. We had a uh, COVID hit us, arrived on our shores, didn't really hit us, arrived on our shores, the government hit us in 2020. And then 2020 was in a, almost a depression because of the restrictions and lockdowns. In both years, the level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere continued rising unabated. Unabated. Yet we've been told for decades now 
that by cutting back on human, on, uh, human production of carbon dioxide, we would see the levels in the atmosphere start decreasing and go down. We had a major reduction in industrial activity in a recession, a severe recession in 2009, 2020. The production of carbon dioxide from human use of hydrocarbons, coal, oil, and natural gas decreased dramatically, yet nothing happened. The carbon dioxide in the atmosphere kept increasing. I asked the CSIRO, why? And they said, oh, there's an inflection. I asked them for the, the details of that inflection to characterize it statistically. They failed to do it. And, and uh, so they said there's an inflection. I asked the Bureau of Meteorology, and they said, oh, Senator Roberts, it will take years for that to come through. So here's the CSIRO saying we've already seen it, and the Bureau of Meteorology saying we will see it eventually, but it'll take a long while to come. You can't make this stuff up. So what the experiment in 2009 and 2020 showed is that the production of carbon dioxide in human, from human activity will not affect the level of carbon dioxide in the air. And once you understand Henry's law, the quantities of carbon dioxide dissolved in the ocean 50 to 70 times more than the entire atmospheric carbon dioxide, then you start to understand why that's the case. But not content with climate science fraud, the CSIRO is perpetrating GenCost, which is energy fraud, based on bogus assumptions, completely debunked. Aidan Morrison has done a marvellous job. Other, others have done a marvellous job. A report in the 2010s. So there's no basis for this scam, this fraud. But let's return to the fraud. A report in the 2010s said Europol found 95% of carbon dioxide trading credits were suspicious. And that's easy to believe because there's no physical basis to the measurement of reduction of carbon dioxide produced. They're all projections. They're all based on guesses, formulas based on estimations, never quantified and still not quantified. China is producing record quantities of carbon dioxide, yet temperatures, and so, and so is Russia, so is Brazil, Australia, well, we're a small player, but um, the United States, European Union, carbon dioxide, and yet temperatures are flat and have been flat since 1995. That's almost 30 years, flat temperatures. So I urge senators to establish this inquiry so we can get to the bottom of how taxpayer money is being abused, fraudulently abused. <laughs>